How's it going guys? Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am so thankful for all of the support, all of the comments, the likes, and all of the subscribes. I greatly appreciate it. I don't want to go too long on this intro. In this video, you guys get an inside scoop on my Tom Ferry coaching. Now I am revamping the way that I chose to do real estate. I'm going in to be a salaried agent with Redfin. Me partnering with Redfin as a full-time lead agent. And you guys get to see my coaching involved with Redfin. Now, this coaching is completely separate from Redfin. I was doing this coaching before Redfin, so you guys know, you guys can see on my channel that I've been doing the Tom Ferry thing, um, and I just pretty much just kept it with me. I pay 650 bucks a month for this um, coaching, so I take it very seriously. Um, and I'm very thankful that my coach can, no matter what I, I'm doing, no matter what route I'm going, my coach can give me the guidance and he can tell me exactly what I need to do to be successful. This video, my coach is going Going in depth on what exactly I need to do to start out successfully in this video I wasn't fully in Redfin um, I had just finished my interview I had just got the job and I was getting all my equipment and waiting for that start date um, to start I am now officially in Redfin I am in my second day of training just finished all my work and you guys will see that growth. You guys will see every step of the way through Redfin. And I just, you know, I decided to keep my Tom Ferry coach and keep developing in that way. So you guys get a firsthand look on the guidance that my coach gave me starting in Redfin. So check it out. Anyways. All right, man. How you doing? I'll, I'll, Good, I'll fiddle with this while we're talking, but uh, how are you, man? Good, man. Very excited uh, with this new endeavor. Ready to pretty yeah. much get started. Can't do shit until I do. <laughs> What, yeah, tell me like tell me about the process and everything, kind of where you're at with it. So basically, completely done. Um, they've sent me all of my equipment. I start Monday. Um, I transferred um, my association. So pretty much everything's all set to go. Everything was cleared. I think it was like yesterday. And so <clears throat> um, I start Monday and pretty much the first week from what I was told, they sent me kind of a schedule. I'll email that to you, uh, but uh, they uh, sent me a schedule. So the first week is uh, classroom setting. So I'll be doing virtual classroom with people all over the state. And then uh, the next week is when I, I start doing infield training. But it did see it did say in my schedule that I did some I did do some infield stuff in my first week. So um, I have to talk to my coach on more specifics on that. I mean, not my coach, but my manager. OK. And where are you based out of? I'm in Oakland. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, and that's, I mean, that's pretty, pretty uh, close for you, right? Yeah, it's about an hour to 45 minutes, but it's not a big deal. It's my hometown. I have family there. But is that where you have to, like, mostly show um, properties in Oakland? Yeah, basically. So I'm a buyer's agent in Oakland, so I only cover the Oakland area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and you don't feel like that's going to be a problem, like, you know, getting there quick or anything like that? No, so what my plan is, obviously the first week um, I'll be I'll be home, but I, my, my plan is to just base at my grandma's house every morning. So, um, you know, um, work that way. So no, it won't be a problem. Okay, that's good. I mean, as long as you're feeling good with it. Yeah. Okay. And do they have, do they have an office? Yes, they have an office. It's just everything is virtual right now because of the shit, uh, COVID. Um, well, I'm excited for you, man. I, here's the thing. It's going to be a hustle. Like, it's going to be like, they're going to work you, bro. Like, they got buyers come out their ass. So you're going to be. That's what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's what I want. You know, I was thinking about that last night. Like, the deals that I was getting through Zillow. And I'm like, well, shit. Like, I was getting deals through that engine. Now, just imagine what I'm going to get through through this engine. And it's like, I'm, I'm ready to work, dude. Like, yeah. this has been killing me. But the split is pretty low, right? Yeah, so basically how it works is, um, so I get a base salary of 24,000. I mean, that's shit, what, 1,000 uh, bucks every two weeks. Um, so yeah. that's a base That's a base salary for not doing shit. Um, yeah. So they're, 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 they don't, they, pay, they reimburse you. Let me say that, they reimburse you for your MLS. So that's cool. Um, they pay for all my gas, they pay for every, so they pay for every showing. So I get up to like 40 bucks per showing. Okay. And then, um, and then, like you said, uh, they work my ass. So I'm gonna be working seven days a week, 
you know, right now it's just the consistency of money is what I need. So yeah, it works for me. Um, yeah. Uh, but and then my closes are pretty much bonuses, not commission. So I get like bonuses for my closes. So you don't write the offers. Yes, I, I still do the real estate drop. I still get the transaction. I write the offers. Um, obviously, my commissions are just small. Yeah. Well, what, what is that split? So from what she how she explained it to me, it ranges between three to five thousand. So she got from what she had said, it was like one. She was saying if I got uh, a 1.5 sale, I would get a, a, a for sure a max of 5,000. 1.5, I don't know what that means. 1.5 million? million? Yeah. How many sales are you gonna sell at 1.5 million? I don't know. I don't, I have no issue. <laughs> well, what's the average, what's the average sale in Oakland? Uh, the average, it's, I mean, it's not a million, but they have homes that hit that price, but it's not that average, no. Yeah. I would say uh, average maybe five. Five, five what? Like 500,000 maybe. I have to look it up. Uh, I just I, got. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be more like 750 to 850. Okay, that makes sense. But I'm guessing. And so at that so at that rate, you don't really know what it would be? So like she just said, it, it, my bonuses ranges between three to 5,000 on closing. I, I get that, but I guess what I'm asking is she didn't give you that exact calculation of what it is? No, she did not. Mm, you should get that, and here's why. We want to back that number into whatever your whatever revenue number you want to make. Okay, so you got to know, because essentially now you have three revenue streams coming in. You've got your salary, you've got your per door dollar, and you've got your split your commission, right? So now you got three revenue streams coming in and we want to look at all three of those and do some projections on if you want to make a hundred grand, how many deals do we have to sell to make a hundred grand gotcha. between the salary, between this, between that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I would suggest that by our next call, try to get those numbers in more and they have a calculation. They don't just guess, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, would, I would say so. Yes. Yeah. But what I'm hearing is you don't know. C correct. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Correct. These are important things. And I'm just trying to coach you up on some important things to ask in life forever. Yeah. When you go into a job, the, the, the compensation structure is important to you mm -hmm. because no matter what they say, you want to make sure you know what it is in writing. Okay. All right. So just try to get that calculation and tell her, Hey, I'm just trying to forecast, try to set some goals for myself. I like to forecast my income for the year or I like to forecast how many deals I need to get to the income level that I want to be at. So what income level do you want to be at? Man, honestly, the my biggest thing is right my first as far as money, my first goal is a hundred thousand. Like I've okay. never been anywhere close to that. So that's pretty much my first goal. And the the most information I pretty much got was from the recruiter. And so basically what she had told me in my role, the average realtor is making 107 on average, um, the average uh, the realtor is making 170,000 a year. Yeah. Um, again, I really don't give, I, I just, I'm yeah, too old for that bullshit line. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna like, I'm just gonna let you take that either. Yeah. So it looks to me like if I just did some simple math, right? If I take 5,000 and divide it by 1.5 million, mm -hmm. and then you essentially it gets to be about 33.33. Yeah. Right? Which I think is, um, give me one second. I was doing some math for you. So I'm trying to back that number down. So if we want to make 100,000, we've got 24,000. Now, is that 24,000 a W2 or a 1099? W-2. Oh, so they do withhold taxes? Yeah. Okay. And I know you're probably not going to hear this, but I would withhold ta a lot of taxes from that. What do, you, what do you mean? Like, what do you say? Like, like, what do you say? Explain. So do they have you fill out a W-4, I think it is? Y yeah. Like I have to, I'm sure I do that in training, but yeah, I have to s submit like that tax form that you do. Yeah. Yeah. What okay. do you normally claim there? I usually only claim, I think, one, because I don't claim all my kids. Okay. Yeah, so I that, usually that, claim one or two. Okay, that'd be good. That means that they're going to withhold more taxes. The less you claim, the more withholdings they have. But 
the good thing about that is because all of your other income, well, I would presume, are they paying your bonus as a 1099 or a W-2? As a W-2. Oh, it's all as a W-2? It's all W-2. Scratch that. I would claim like nine, (laughs) to be honest, (laughs) because um, you don't want them withholding that much then. So that's actually pretty good, to be quite honest. I know it seems weird because most real estate is 1099, but if they withhold the taxes, um, that means that you won't have to pay as much at the end, if any, you might not have to pay any. Okay. So here's, these are a couple of things I just want you to be aware of going into this job that's going to help you down the road. You're not going to see it now, yeah. but you've got to do a couple of things right now to make sure at the end of this journey, at the end of the year, that you are protected, you're protecting yourself. One of them is you want to understand how much you're going to put on that claim form, right? So maybe how many kids do you have? <laughs> In total, I have five. Um, but they all I have two that I take care of. Okay, and the other three are just not in the house. Correct. I like I I have like part vi- time visitation and I Got pay shop. Yeah. So I would claim at least four, if not six. Okay, total. That means with you, your wife, and your kid and the kids. Okay. Okay, but do you have a tax guy that does your taxes? No, I do all that stuff. So I know what you're talking about. Okay. So um, anyway, so you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna tell you what I've done. Yeah. Don't take this as tax advice. Just take this as bro advice. We're just having a conversation. All right. I don't want you to come back in a year and tell me all this shit. But if if they're withholding taxes, if you're going to W-2, you don't want them to withhold too much. You don't want them to hold too little. So that's where that form comes in. You kind of balance it out. All yeah. right. If you claim four to six, I think you'd be right. Me personally, I always claim nine. Just Just giving you where I'm at. Okay, and I only have two kids. I have three, but one of them is old. Gotcha. So the second part of this is reimbursement for expenses. How are you going to track your gas and mileage and everything? You know, I that's a great question because I figured like by receipts, um, but I I just I guess also I was, I guess I probably shouldn't assume, but I was assuming that they would train me on how they would want me to give that back. Like, I'm going to guess they don't. They're going to they're going to tell you. Here's what corporations do that pisses me off all the time. Um, does that look weird to you? Yeah, your camera's tripping up. Okay, so remember this though. Most corporations, when you have to submit your whatever, right? When you've got to submit your, it's so funny, I can see myself now, but I, it's not showing me. Um, when you have to submit your expenses, they'll tell you the process they want you to submit them but they don't really hound you about it. And the reason why is if you don't submit them, they don't pay. They don't pay, right. Right? (laughs) So it's super important in the beginning, like right now, you need to figure out your method of tracking your miles. And for you, it's gonna be a lot because um, you're driving so much. So it's technically from when you leave your house to when you get to the appointment and back. Yeah. Okay, so I would, I would, if I was you, I would look at maybe some apps on your phone. There's some apps where you can just download them. And then when you go on an appointment, you just, you got to remember to do it though. Yeah. You flip open that app. And every time you're going to an appointment, you just, you just click like appointment or something. Yeah. And it starts tracking the miles. What's, do you know, would you have an app? I, I know what you're talking about. I just can't think of like the I app. I can't, you know what? I don't even know the name of them either. But if okay. you just type in mileage tracker. Exactly. There you go. That's the proper word. Like mileage tracker app, it'll come up. Yeah, I'm sure. Perfect. Here's a bunch of them. So um, I think Hurdler is the one that I've heard of the most, I think. But let me look at it real quick. No, take your time. It's all good. I um, heard. Uh, H-U-R-D-L-R. L-R, cool. Right? And so it does all the mileage tracking, but you have to use the app. So it's going to be super, super important that you, you know, figure that process out. All right? Yeah. Cool. So these are, and, and again, I, I've been in your position. I've been in these type of jobs like multiple times. Okay. And I didn't, you know, I was never really advised this. Or to be quite honest, I was advised of this stuff and I just didn't listen. And when it came down to the end of the year to do my taxes, it really screwed me over on money. Okay. Okay. So it's not like you can't just fly blind and be like, cool, I'm just getting paid. You've got to be 
very, very um, structured in getting those expenses recorded and getting those expenses submitted. It's going to be a lot of money. Okay. Because think about it, bro. The government, the federal government, the allowance is 52 cents per mile. So it's important that you track this stuff and you really understand, you know, what's going on with it. Because if you don't, you're going to get screwed out of a lot of money. Okay. 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 All right. Um, what else? What else do you need to get that job or to be successful with that job? Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of like just brushing up on the buyer stuff on um, Tom Ferry. But I think, man, just starting out is building that trust. I think uh, one of the things they they had mentioned is that like, I guess the agents that they have don't really know Oakland that well. And I do. So I think uh, just really getting out there. Um, it's, it's just what I want to do. I, I hate that I even have to go through a training process. Like I've, I've done the work. Let me just get out there. But um, yeah, it's, I think for me, it's just getting out there as much as I can, getting my face and being as recognizable. Um, that, that That's pretty much my goal. Like not thinking about the money too much. I'm just, you know, fo- trying to focus on the job. Like that's what I, <laughs> that's what I wasn't able to do here in Stockton. You know, these prices are just... Uh, going so crazy and you know it was getting away from the clients that I was working with so now I can I can take away all that shit I was doing for free and now just focus on the job so that's kind of how I'm looking at it going into cool no I love that I love the mindset right there bro that's exactly what you need so I I really appreciate that mindset Um, the other thing that I want you to just be aware of there's two things I want you to keep in mind number one is they're going to train you on the process but this is how I think they're going to train you you want to just go with appointment first, right? So yeah. somebody calls you, hey, we want to see this house over in Oakland. Fantastic, man. When would be the best time? I'm available. Two things. You, number one is you want to get on that appointment as fast as you can. You want to get face to face with them as fast as you can. And even in the conversations, you want to just go ahead and just go straight for that appointment time, right? That would be my advice. I, now, hey. Again, they might train you different, but that would be my advice. Because that's what the people expect. When they call you, they're expecting to go see that home. So when you you fulfill that expectation, it's going to make that relationship faster. Yeah. Right. Um, It's like you take your chick out. You tell you you're going to take her for a nice dinner and you take her to Taco Bell. That's not the same expectation. Right. (laughs) I love Taco Bell, but not on Friday night. (laughs) Right. She's she's disappointed. Right. So you want to match that expectation right away. Their expectations where we want to see a home. You're the buyer's agent. We're going to match that expectation. Number one, showing them the house is my appointment. What's that? I said, showing them the house is my appointment. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I got a call, Hey, this is, you know, whatever Billy, and we want to see this house over on, you know, 52nd street. Awesome, man. Um, I'm available this afternoon at three or I can do tomorrow at 10 AM, which one works best for you. Right. So I'm, I'm going right for like setting the time. And I'm taking control of that time. I'm not saying, hey, they're probably not going to tell you this part, but you can switch it. But I'm not saying, hey, Mr. Buyer, when do you want to go see? What's best for you? I'm giving them an alternate choice. So I'm using the alternate choice close to say, because I know my schedule. So I'm going to have my schedule in front of me and I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I can do it tonight at five or I can do it tomorrow at 10 a.m. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm taking control. I'm setting the appointment, but I'm taking control of it. I'm not just leaving it in their hands. Got it. Okay, it's called the alternate choice close, and it works amazing. You've got to learn it quick, because otherwise buyers will run you ragged, and you've got to be able to take control of that. All right. Yep. The second part of that is, in terms of this whole project, is remember that you're now building your client base. Exactly. All right. A lot of people in um, a lot of people in um, in your type of situation, in terms of like a buyer's agent, they forget. They just get so focused on that they're just there to help the buyers, but that's not true. You want to build that relationship, and you want to have some sort of plan to keep in contact with these people. You want to make them your friends because you're probably not going to be in this role forever, right? This is going to be a great role for maybe a year maybe two but the but the market's going to shift and it might not be the best role for you anymore but that's okay because you're getting experience and you're building your clientele 
Exactly. I'm pretty much doing this until I become a broker. That's it. But I, but I, yeah, exactly. But that, that's my goal is to take everything, take what I'm learning, but then take the clients that I built the relationships with yep. that. So yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, we're going to talk about like how we can keep in contact with those people. And I'm not sure what the Redfin rules are. We got to be careful there. Yeah. But you definitely want to be able to just stay in touch with those people, like either quarterly, um, you know, quarterly probably best, just a quick text or phone call. Hey, this is Derek. Just checking in. Want to see how the house is treating you? How the, how's the family? You know, yeah. hey, this is Derek. Just want to say happy summer. You know, appreciate referrals, that kind of thing. Like every quarter, you're just going to check in with them. Sounds good. All right. So I just want you to, I love the mindset that you have. I love the hustle mindset. I know you're in the right spot. I think it's a good move for you. I just want to make sure that we are able to capitalize and look farther than just tomorrow. Make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. What are you doing with all your um, probate stuff? Then Are you just going to put that on the side for a minute or? Man, honestly, I've just been referring it out. So I got, uh, I'm, I know this guy, um, he has a, a virtual assistant. And so um, I pretty much been shooting him the leads for a 50% referral. Oh, wow. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so he's, he's been sending me some of the calls that they've been doing. And so that's pretty much I'm, I've been doing until it runs out. Um, been just been sending it, sending it to him. And then, um, yeah, does your, um, does your wife have a real estate license? No, my wife is in law school. So she's, she, she, her plan is to basically, once she gets her law, to, uh, once she passes the bar, all she has to do is go to school to be a broker. She yeah. Broker. But right now she's strictly law. I don't think she's planning on real estate. I know she wants well, to do like the probate field or real estate law, but yeah. Yeah, the only reason I asked bro is like, if she had a real estate license, you could have those referrals go to her. I didn't think of that. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm always that. thinking, bro. I'm always no, thinking. As you should, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm real good at getting mo the most money to me. That's for sure. I, I, see, I see that. Or if you had a friend or a family member, you know, you could tell them. It, yeah. it gets a little sticky because they'd have to claim it all on their taxes. But with yeah. your wife, it's not that big a deal. It's a shared, you know, essentially it's shared money. Exactly. Um, anyways, just something to think about. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but. I don't know, dude. I How I'm looking at this is just a it's i'm going to do real estate till i die so it's just a a stepping stone right like i hit yeah. i'm not saying i hit a wall but i it was something i had to take a step back and you know i got to provide for my family so yeah. even though i have to go back to work at least i'm still doing real estate so i'm happy i agree no i think too bro hey man listen you're talking to a guy that's made a lot of decisions like that in his life for his family you're right so i'm right with you i think you're doing the right thing Perfect. you got to put you know you got to bring money in in one way or another and, and you and i both know that if you're not out in front of clients every day, you're not selling, you know? So this puts you, that gets you all those things, check marks, all those boxes. So this is great. I'm totally Definitely. with you. And I'm just trying to help you maximize that return and make sure, like I said, we're tracking your expenses, you know, whether it's the referrals. Now you don't have an LLC right now? No, I I, I no, I have, I do not. Okay. Well, well, number one, bro, if you plan on doing an, a real estate for your life, you need an LLC. LLC. Yeah. Do, you, do you know anybody that knows law very well? My wife, she actually has had an LLC, so I need No to shit, your wife, mofo. That's what I'm getting at, dude. <laughs> exactly. You you sleep with the one every night. Just tell her to open an LLC. It was a rhetorical question, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's your wife. <laughs> right? Tell her tonight, open an LLC. You can go to you can go to um, LegalZoom. It's okay. 350 bucks or something. 300 bucks, dude. 20 minutes. All right? Okay. So if you want to do real estate for your life, you got to have an LLC. That's just the way it works. I know we've talked about it before. I don't know why you didn't open one. Um, I got you. So go open an LLC and then we can worry about the rest of the stuff. But at least that's a start. All right. Okay. They can't pay you a W-2 on an LLC, but um, anyways. All right. Anything else, bro? No, man. That's great information. Uh, I will definitely be mindful of uh, the you know, the appointments being structured on my, being very structured on my knowledge, um, following the, just everything with reimbursement, making sure I'm getting my money back. Yeah. So, it's going to be big. Yeah. Like you're going to have like $2,000 reimbursement checks some months. That's yeah. a lot of money, dude. No. Yeah. I already got my MLS that they're going to be giving me back. So yeah. Like yeah. All that, all that shit, like receipts become very, very important right now. So make sure that you're keeping every receipt. You're either 
you know, taking a photo of it. There's some apps too, where you can do like a receipt. It's like a receipt um, organizer. Okay. So you just take a picture with your phone and it goes into a file. So it's all right there. The other thing you might want to do, what I do is I have a business account through Chase and every expense in my business, I just put through that account. So then when I go back and I look, I don't have to separate all the stuff from my personal. So I know that everything that I do with that account, I can just print out a, a thing from the end of the month and I can see all my expenses right there. And I know 100% of those expenses are business related. I have a credit card that I usually, I try and use solely for like gas and like things like that. Like would, would you recommend I use, like I could use a credit card to-, sure. to yeah. Yeah, just don't commingle, right? So if you if you dedicate that card to business, just right. don't, you know. And and remember, well, you're a W two, so I don't think you can write off meals anymore. I don't know. I, yeah. You might be able to write off single meal, individual meals. Like if you're out showing and you have to stop and get food, yeah, you can write that meal off. Gotcha. But you can't write off, I don't believe, I don't think like you can take the family out to dinner and write that off as a business expense. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so either. Yeah, I actually, I don't even think you can, as a W-2 employee, you can take a client out to lunch, you only get to write off one meal. Mm. So you might wanna look into that stuff too. But yes, I mean, the, the goal is that for easy tracking, have one card for and just use it for business. Don't commingle it. Okay. Cool. Speaking of that, I can't find my business card. <laughs> I lost both my debit card. Um, all right, man, I got to jump to another call. Anything else you need? That's it, coach. I can't wait to our next call on the, you know, I'm more into the process. Yeah, I was just going to say that too. And the other thing I really want to start, um, two things for next call. I want to have an, an idea of how we forecast our, our income. So we want to look at that. So make sure you get those numbers for me, at least some rough calculations. And then number two is, um, we want to make sure that we're tracking all of how many appointments we're going on and what they're turning into. Perfect. Cool. Yep. Awesome. All right, buddy. Hey, have a great weekend. You too, man. Have a good appreciate, one. I appreciate your patience with the camera. That's all good. Appreciate you for all the advice. Have a great one. All right. Talk to you. Bye. <laughs>